Welcome in Southern California. This is Radio Free Los Angeles. Do you copy? Repeat, do you copy? Now broadcasting from behind the Iron Curtain in the People's Republic of California, we bring you the voice of free men, free markets, and limited constitutional government. Welcome to citizen-sponsored Radio Free Los Angeles with the president of the California Tax Limitation Committee, Mike Alexander, and America's funniest reporter, Carl Kozlowski. Hey, good evening, everyone. Mike Alexander here coming to you again from our studios here in Glendale, California at Radio KRLA 870. Uh, if you would like to participate, we've got a good program here for you tonight, but if you'd like to participate, our call-in number is 866-870-5752, 866-870-KRLA. It's great to be on the station. I want to welcome everybody, our usual team. I've got Carl Kozlowski. Carl, how Huzzah. was your week? How are you doing? All right, good. I see you are decked out in your tri Try corner hat. Oh yes, right. fully inspired, sir. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. It's uh, or a three cornered hat. Let's see, was that? Uh, uh, it wasn't Granados who composed that. The other Defaya, Faya. I think so. Yeah. So uh, at any rate, but not referring to the American Revolution. And we have Jonathan Wilson here. How are you tonight, Jonathan? Huzzah! All right. And Manny Soprano is joining us again. Manny, welcome. Doing? All right. Thanks, everybody, for coming in. Now, our show tonight is going to be, uh, once again, uh, brought citizen-sponsored radio, brought to you here by all of our wonderful contributors. Jonathan will give us an update here a little bit later on contributors. Our show tonight will lead off with a discussion, once again, of San Marino, particularly San Marino's debt bomb, as we call it. It could be closer to an asteroid. I'll talk to you about some of that, but uh, because of the uh, you know the financial problems that they had in San Reno, uh, the California Tax Limitation Committee, working with citizens in San Reno, were very instrumental in getting the word out about the financial crisis, particularly the pension disaster confronted by San Reno and everybody else, and there were three. Uh, a brand new councilman who uh, who had presented themselves for office and who ran on this platform of uh, fiscal responsibility. And we're going to have one of them, uh, Ken Udy. I uh, and Ken, uh, you're going to correct me if I'm mispronouncing your name, but is U D E. Ken is a newly elected councilman uh, for the city of San Marino. He's going to come on in a few minutes and and re- reflect uh, with us on his experience of what he's seeing down there. Uh, in the second half of the show, we are going to begin a more detailed discussion of the most pressing and important issue that we face here in California, and that is education. But particularly, I should say, the lack thereof. We are going to discuss in particular a new proposal for school choice here in the state of California, which uh, features educational savings accounts for every student in the state and the opportunity to use up to $11,000 per year per child at a school of your choice. And yes, it will include uh, religious schools and private schools as well as your local uh, uh, public school. Uh, uh, To paraphrase uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Obama, if you like your public school, you'll be able to keep your public school, right? If you like your teacher, you'll be able to keep your teacher, right? You might just find her at a different address, or maybe they'll just put her out to pasture like they should have to start with. Uh, In in any way, uh, that'll get the teachers on the phone. Yeah, there are a lot of them are mean, surly lot, especially at the salaries they make. But uh, it, it, in any event, we'll talk about all all those things. And, of course, we'll have our favorite feature, which is Government Grifter of the Week. Do you have your nomination set, guys? Oh, we're excited. Man, we've got lots of great nominations this week. <laughs> Stay well, tuned. Uh, all right. It's a lot, a lot, a lot of fun. And, uh, uh, hey, uh, uh, now uh, you should know. Uh, that uh, uh, that our friend here, Carl Kozlowski, 
is uh, an intrepid reporter, does a lot of movie reviewing. <laughs> when are the when are the uh, uh, you write for Pasadena yes, sir. Weekly, Pasadena yeah. Weekly, and a bunch of other sites? Yeah, good, good. And you do a lot of movie reviews. Yeah. When, when are the Academy Awards coming up this year? Oh boy, yeah. There's going to be a lot of virtue uh, virtue posturing of that one. Two weeks uh, March fourth, two, two weeks, weeks from tonight, right? Yeah, really. Or yeah. is it Monday yeah. night? That's, I think it's on. That's a Sunday, I believe, oh, okay. March fourth. Yeah. yeah. Are you going to the Oscars this year? No. Uh, yeah, uh, they they definitely want me there. I'm ultra glamorous. <laughs> Hi. Yeah, I'll yeah, show up with a hat. I think it's super sexy. Yeah, we don't want to see you on that red carpet. They don't want my cleavage or me. <laughs> yeah, yours. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Well, you know, one of these times we we'll, we we'll have maybe bring a couple of movies to our, our attention. That uh, that our Ooh. audience would like. I got one actually. There's yeah? one movie that everybody. I, ironically, it's the one I still have to catch up this week fast. But uh, a movie about Winston Churchill uh, called Darkest Hour. Yes. Every conservative I know has said, "Why haven't you seen that yet?" And I don't have a good answer. But it's supposed to be an amazing portrayal of true leadership at a uh, time of crisis. You know, obviously, and um, a lot of Trump fans are really digging the movie and saying that. It uh, is very. They feel the same energy out of Donald, I, out of the I, president. I like the movie, and uh, I've seen this. Gary, what's his last name? Oldman. Gary Oldman. Gary Oldman. He's a very conservative guy. Did a great job, and uh, I, I really enjoyed it. Maybe we'll do that. But do you, you can maybe bring a little bit of that flavor to us. Now, do we have uh, Ken Udy on the, uh, on the line yet, uh, Sterling? Yes, sir. Can uh, you hear me? All right, uh, Ken Udy. Uh, uh, you heard my intro for for the audience out there once again. Ken Udy is a uh, new uh, city councilman down in the city of San Marino. Now, for a lot of you people, I can almost hear you right now. Say, San Marino, what in the world do we care about this uh, uh, rich uh, suburban town uh, with no worries and so forth? Uh, Ken Udy will tell you about all those problems. But my point to you is I want you to pay close attention. What you're going to hear about San Marino is true and often much, much worse in every city and county in the state of California. San Marino is a case study. We spend a lot a lot of time on it. But in any event, uh, uh, Ken, uh, you and your, uh, uh, and your other two uh, councilmanic uh, uh, candidates – Presented yourself uh, for office here in the most recent election. Congratulations again on your election. Uh, maybe you could tell us what motivated you to run. Uh, m- my prime motivation was frustration. Because I saw a lot of the issues facing the city and some of the decisions being made. And you know, my, my background, Mike, as you know, is I've uh, been a businessman for 40 years. So yes. you know, I, I'm used to balancing budgets and putting money on the bottom line and, and CapEx and deferred maintenance and all those things. And I just thought that this was a time where my background and orientation could uh, could be a benefit. So I yes. put my hat in the ring, and a year ago I would have never thought I would have done this. Yes. Hey, by the way, are you on a, uh, on a cell phone? Uh, you don't have the radio on in the background, do you? I'm on a cell phone, no radio on. Okay, good. Yeah, it, it kind of wanders around just a little bit. Not your fault. Just the uh, the cell phone world. Uh, in, in any event, as you know, uh, the California Tax Limitation uh, Committee did a lot of work down in uh, San Marino and brought to the citizens' attention a huge uh, pension deficit uh, that ranges anywhere from twenty two million to ninety two million and deferred maintenance of forty or fifty million dollars uh, that seemed to have concerned a, a lot of citizens uh, what is your take on on those two numbers and uh, and how are you guys uh, coping with those uh, budget realities uh, first of all Mike we're, we're, we're getting our arms around it you know we've the new council's only been in a couple months and there has been a financial a uh, long-term strategic planning committee put it together with some of the really bright people in town. We are looking at the unfunded pension liability and the different maintenance and coming up with a plan. Um, now, to San Marino's benefit, we have a very strong... Hey, hey Ken? Uh, yes. Ken, we're having uh, uh, a, a tough time uh, speaking. Are you near a landline? 
Uh, let me uh, let me call in on the number, Mike, yeah. and I'll, gi- I'll give it a try. Yeah. Why don't you? Yeah. By the way, you got real clear right then and there. But before well, your signal was wandering, uh, yeah. Why don't you call in on that? Uh, use your landline okay. to call in. Can you hear me now? Is this better? Yeah, much better. Yeah, we're one okay. minute to break, so don't worry. we got okay. plenty of time. There's nothing okay. more important. So you've uh, gotten a committee uh, together to look yeah, at these and, issues. And, and and we're looking at, you know, at, at the long-term implications of the unfunded pension liability that I'll talk to in a minute, plus the uh, deferred maintenance and, you know, how much of a reserve balance is appropriate for a city like San Marino? Because yes. as you know, we have we have twenty four million dollars in the bank right now, which is about a year's worth of operating expenses. So the obvious question is, how much you know money in the bank does San Marino need? Right. Whether the the earthquake, the next windstorm, or whatever might come along. So we're kind of studying that and looking at it. Okay, Ken, hang on to those wonderful thoughts. Uh, We're going to a break right now. We'll be back uh, here uh, in about uh, 30 seconds or a minute. Back with you. If you like what you're hearing and would like to support Radio Free Los Angeles and the California Tax Limitation Committee, please call area code 626-792-1772. 626-792-1772 or kindly visit our website catlc.net catlc.net you can also watch radio free los angeles on facebook live at radiofreela.us if you'd like to talk with radio free los angeles the phone lines are wide open 866-870-KRLA. That's 866-870-5752. We're live, local, and here to talk with you. 866-870-KRLA. All right, back with you. Mike Alexander again. Uh, we have uh, as our guest uh, on on the uh, telephone here, Ken Udy, uh, new councilman for the city of San Marino. Ken, one of the major issues that we that we raised is the $22 million underfunded pension plan that may be as much as $92 million. Does this new uh, uh, committee, and by the way, generally I, you know, I, I recoil in horror at the idea of creating another committee, but in this case, uh-huh. one really is necessary. What is, what is, uh, uh, their their task. Uh, what have you asked them to right. do about uh, that number? I, I believe, and I, I give the, the credit to the prior city council that they were were not as attuned financially. So they uh, created this committee, and we went to. There's a lot of talented people in San Marino, so we tapped into many of the most talented to help us look and understand what these three components might be to come up with a recommendation and a plan. Right. And 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 Mike, as you know, this unfunded pension liability is not a number. It is just, it, 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 it's, it's kind of a random number because of all the assumptions built in. Yes. You know, how long are people going to live? What's your investment return going to be? And that's why you see such a huge range from the, you know, the $25 million to the $90 million number. Correct. And, and it's also a game that CalPERS created the game. They put the uh, sidelines in. They put the goalposts up. They brought the ball to the game, and it's their game. Right. So it's, it's hard to change what you know what's happened to us in the past so all we can do is kind of understand that manage to it and then take actions within the city to to minimize our future right. um exposure you know uh, uh ken one of the things in fact i think you and i uh chatted about it uh, once before uh, uh even if this number is hard to get your arms around and difficult to to define any business, and you're a business guy. I mean, those are your origins here. It's what you do for a living even today, working with families and whatnot. But isn't it important to at least get that number and put it on your balance sheet so that when you have negotiation time with the public employees, you can say that we do not have a revenue surplus, we're negative, we're underwater, and we can't afford no more, no more? Absolutely, absolutely. You know, and it's been you know, ignored or brushed under the carpet up until, what, it was about three years ago? Yes. And I, and, and I think, Mike, you, you probably heard even last week they were thinking about shortening up the amortization period from 30 years to 20 years, which would make the current obligation even that much steeper for cities. Correct. You know, even uh, the Los Angeles Times 
uh, whom I uh, have derisively referred to as L.A. Pravda, mm-hmm. yeah, th- they have been outstanding on this pensions issue, uh, as has the Sacramento Bee, of all places, with Dan Walters, and in even the uh you know the the left side of the political spectrum has has become alarmed at this uh at, at this pension problem uh and, uh, and and mike well what is it nationally isn't it like four trillion dollars nationally yes so you know you, you have the spotlight on sam reno this evening on this call but it's it's not just a sam reno issue this is a huge national issue Correct. And, and, and Ken, thank you for emphasizing that. As we talked about at the very beginning, San Marino is a case study only because we've been talking about it. As a matter of fact, we've worked in other cities uh, on these same issues. For example, Glendale, where they're admitted underfunding is $450 million, but their likely underfunding could be as much as a billion dollars in a city with only 100,000 people. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. And, uh, you know, this this is something which I don't think is a conservative issue, a Republican, Democrat, uh, or any other kind of issue. It is a serious uh, financial crisis, a governmental crisis. And what you and, – and believe me, I wouldn't want to be a councilman for one of these cities stuck between CalPERS, the public employees, and a hard place uh, trying to cope with this because uh, – you're going to have an increasing portion of your budget allocated just to paying a pension debt, which is nothing more than paying for services already rendered in the past. Yeah, I saw some some figures this last week where it could be as much as fifty three percent of total payroll goes to to fund this out. You know, right. 50 to twenty years from now. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And if not sooner, not to disagree with you. The point of it is, and, and let me make this. Ken said one thing. Others say another. This doesn't mean that uh, that that the councilman is wrong. What this really means is that it is almost impossible to know, which is why we, the taxpayers, and all the cities have to get out of the pension business and move to a defined contribution uh, plan. Uh, now, speaking of which. Or do you think that there's any chance of moving the city of San Marino's new employees, that is the new hires, to a defined contribution? That is where where they're they're not on the usual lifetime pension, but you're just going to give them uh, their regular salary plus a percentage uh, for to put in their own 401k type account. What what do you think the chances are there? Yeah, that, that, that's premature for me to even comment on. Mike. Okay. I, I think I'll right. wait for this long term. Financial Strategic Planning Committee to come back with their recommendations, <laughs> and then we'll take it to council and discuss it and yeah. and, and figure out what the right right you know plan might be. Yeah, well, fair enough. Yeah, we 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 don't want to put you yeah uh, in a in an impossible position, and I commend you for wanting to get uh, get out those numbers. How about the deferred maintenance? Uh, uh, yeah, I've seen numbers forty million, fifty million. Do you guys have 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 any kind of uh, of an idea of what it's going to cost you to bring your city up to date? The primary area I understand, Mike, is streets and street maintenance. And we have had a consulting group that is supposed to bring their report, you know, back to the uh, the same committee in the next couple of weeks. So, you know, in, in, in two or three weeks, I'll have a much better feel for, yeah. for, for what that looks like. Because I kind of anticipate there being three scenarios. One would be how much money do you got to throw at it now? Yeah. fix it. Uh, the, the opposite scenario would be, you know, no money at it now. What's it, what's it going to look like uh, long term? And then something in between. So we'll have to model that up and play with that. Sure. Now, um, now how, how about, uh, I've heard a lot about sewers and water systems, not only in San Marino, but uh, every older city. And San Marino is, what, about 100 years old? Yep, yeah, something like that. Yeah. And, and, I mean, that describes Los Angeles, Pasadena and dozens of other cities. What is your uh, water and sewer system, uh, how does it stack up? Uh, I'm only a couple months into this gig, and I do <laughs> not know. But what, what I'm, I'm looking forward to, Mike, is the solid report we're going to get back on the streets. Yeah. 
because that will give us a model on how to analyze and look at the the other obligations we have. Gotcha. And, and, and then we'll be able to, you know, put, put our thumb up in the air and come up with a plan. I got you. Now, uh, just to, you know, to wrap up, and I mean, I, I do understand and, and, and appreciate your position, which is you're still trying to get your arms around it. And one of our criticisms of, of a lot of these cities is that the councilmen are really often not doing that and re- relying on the city manager and or the unions uh, for information, man- critical man- management information. So I applaud your efforts, and I know some of and the I, people on your committee. And, 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 and Mike, I'm, I am uh, naively optimistic here. I think we are positioning ourselves for success. Mm-hmm. We have a relatively <clears throat> new city council that views the world in the same way and is fairly aligned. Yep. We have a new city manager been in since October, who understands and appreciates that the council sets policy and the city manager executes. Yes. Uh, the rest of the city staff is fairly new, so when we go look under a rock and if we see a creepy bug, it's not a bug that you created, it's not a bug that I created. We look at the bug and we figure out what to do with it. <laughs> right. so I think, I, I Step think on a fairly, it. you know, positive and proactive group of people here that yeah. are looking realistically with clear glasses on about what we're facing and going after it. Hey, Ken, we got a minute to go. In that minute, could you give me some, uh, what kind of feedback are you getting from the people who voted for you and the other citizens uh, in uh, San Marino? Uh, very positive. Very, very positive. When they when they understand what we're doing, uh, you know, it, it's very positive. We have this, you know, long-term strategic financial committee going. We've kicked off a uh, long-term strategic plan, so that's looking at the assets of, of the city and what to do. Both those things should be done by the end of March, so when we go into the budgeting process, we have visibility there. We're, we're taking a fresh look at the recreation department to see what, you know, what the right role and services are there. We're looking at, you know, the, the possibility of outsourcing some city services, mm-hmm. uh, you know, in a more efficient way. So it, it's a clean chalkboard, and we're pretty excited about it. Sounds good. Yeah, Ken, I appreciate you coming on tonight, and I hope that this won't be the last time. We'd love to have you back and even some other uh, uh, period, uh, excuse me, some other councilmen uh, and persons who are participating in this process because you're continuing dialogue with uh, with your constituents and with other concerned people is really an important dialogue that other cities need to know about. Yeah, I, I think we're going to be a great role model for other cities to look at. And, you know, when we get into our budgeting process in, in April, May, June, that could be a great time to come back and share with what our, you know, two committees have found and what we're learning about pensions and infrastructure and what we're doing and share it so hopefully everybody will, will learn from it. Hey, I do hope so, too. Thank you again, Ken, right. from, uh, for calling in. I look forward to staying in touch. All right. Okay. Thanks much. Appreciate You're it. very welcome. Right. That was a great call with Ken Udy, and he would probably be uh, uh, too modest to talk about his considerable background, which includes – uh, a number of corporate turnarounds. Uh, he works with families on uh, succession planning and a number of other things. I'm not sure he might even teach at USC. But at any rate, uh, Ken Udy is clearly a member of the varsity, the business varsity, and there are a number of other people down there working with him. And he is quite right. I, I, I think the San Reno, because of its high level of professionals and financial literacy, and affluent uh, citizens does have the chance uh, to to become a role model for other cities, and God only knows that there you know that it's going to be needed, because down in San Marino and uh, uh, you know for example, uh, we we have uh, per, uh, total debt down there, bond debt, pension debt, uh, in, uh, and, and deferred maintenance that may be as uh, as little. As little as ninety million, if you can use the word uh, "little," and it may be as high as one hundred eighty million, de- depending upon what those numbers are. Now, uh, you you can see that uh, the political sensitivity of trying to get at that number, because if you take that number and you plop that thing on your balance sheet where it should be, just like you're going to the bank to get a loan. Uh, you know, that number would be uh, large. It would be uh, almost prohibitive. So they uh, very often these cities 
They don't put it down there. They allow uh, CalPERS to give them a phony number. They don't recognize that it's phony uh, or understate it. They don't put it on their balance sheet. Then that permits the public employees uh, in that city to claim that they have a revenue surplus. So you have a situation down there in, in uh, San Marino where they've got twenty twenty five million dollars. So the public employees down there start jonesing for that money. They say, I say, oh, it's been a long time uh, since we had a cost of living. We haven't had a raise and so long and so forth. Well, the fact is that money's not there. Now, I don't blame uh, Ken for not wanting to step in the middle of it. He just got there. So I'm not going to be you know, too hard on him right now. And clearly, clearly, even though he can't say it, the cities have got to get out of this pension business as soon as possible. They're going to have to go to the same kind of defined contribution system that you and I are on. Usually, in my case, I'm paying my own. But everybody else gets uh, uh, so many dollars or percent or matching, and you put it into your own 401k account. Now, let me tell you, you may think that the public employees are going to question what I'm doing here, but I can assure you that uh, that many of them uh, know the same things that I know the same things that I know, and they're going to be wanting to get out of the system. And I think one of the things that we need to be looking at in this state is to create the opportunity for public employees to withdraw from the current system. Currently, they don't they don't have that ability, or it's so um, difficult uh, and, and restrained that they can't really get all of their money out of us. So we definitely want to... Uh, work with public employees to get them out of the system. So, hey, we're going to be back on the other side. We're at the bottom of the hour. And in the next half hour here, we're going to talk about school choice and a few other announcements. Thank you. See you on the other side. Come in, Southern California. This is Radio Free Los Angeles. Do you copy? Repeat. Do you copy? Now broadcasting from behind the Iron Curtain in the People's Republic of California, we bring you the voice of free men, free markets, and limited constitutional government. Welcome to citizen-sponsored Radio Free Los Angeles with the president of the California Tax Limitation Committee, Mike Alexander, and America's funniest reporter, Carl Kozlowski. All right, back with you here. And, uh, uh, you know, I forgot to recognize our old friend Sullivan uh, over, over here who uh, handles uh, all of the uh, – Sullivan Williams, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, Sullivan Williams is our engineer, and he gives me the high signs and uh, keeps me on track. Uh, you know, this uh, station here, for any of you out there that are, are thinking of – uh, advertising either on this program or getting your own show. I can't say enough good things about KRLA and, and their staff. They're 100% professional around here, and they make all of us look good when we come in. Your sound's professional. I've gotten a lot of really great comments, not just about the uh, about the content of the program or my own or our shared participation here, but just it just sounds so good, and, and that's a tribute to uh, uh, to our engineer. So give, yeah, give William some more money. Come on, you guys <laughs> loosen up. Yeah. I yeah. got his agreement in there. <laughs> so, uh, anyway, Hey, uh, I want to bring you up to date here. We, we had, that was a, a good interview, uh, with Ken Udy. And obviously he's only been in, uh, in office a couple of three months, still trying to figure out what the heck's going on down there. And we look forward to having him back. Uh, in the meantime, uh, our own organization, uh, which is uh, the California Tax Limitation Committee, has continued to sponsor events in the community. And one of them happened today at the home of uh, uh, Judy and Ed Schrader down in Pasadena. And I just wanted to give a, a shout-out and a thank you to both of them for furnishing your uh, – making your home available. Yeah, that was, was a great event. Wasn't I'll it? I'll tell you what, yeah. We had a lot a lot of people there, had a lot of young people there. And some new faces. Yes. Yeah. Uh, you know, we've been at this for, for a lot of years, and uh, uh, we've reached a crisis point in California where people are starting to pay attention to the local and statewide issues. I thought it was refreshing 
uh, to talk with uh, the folks there and to to explain to them and in turn have them express that they understand that the federal, state, and local issues are all intertwined and that we can have a tremendous national impact just by doing here in California what we do. Now, just imagine, and this is the message that we're trying to get out in our neighborhood forums, just imagine if we here in California take on this pension plan and wrestle this uh, dogie uh, to the sand. We will set an example for the rest of the country. California is capable of fiscal responsibility. Imagine if we take on uh, the issue of school choice and we put the power to educate children into the hands of the parents. Amazing. Amazing. Uh, That is revolutionary. It's not happening. We'll talk more about that. But these things can happen. All that it takes is for the citizens to vote. And, you know, here in this state, we're not even fully registered. And uh, and voter turnout is particularly low. Uh, voter turnout in the last gubernatorial election, that's the, the election for governor <laughs> uh, here uh, a couple of uh, years ago, uh, was maybe around 20 or 22 percent. It was an historic low. That's for governor. And I know it, it was moonbeam, and I know yeah. that there was no viable Republican candidate, but whose fault is that? Well, he puts it, well, moonbeam puts the uh, goober in gubernatorial. Oh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah uh, but by the way, you know, Jerry Brown, uh, I always regard him as a Jesuit. As you know, at one time he studied to be a Jesuit priest. Never quite got over it. He thinks like a Jesuit. I know Jesuits. I know how they think. And at any given time, the best man and the worst man on the side of any issue is probably going to be a Jesuit. Mm. And Jerry is no different. You know, uh, he's, he's had every bad idea that there is. But every once in a while, he actually swerves in the right thing. I guess it's just, you know, random numbers had to work. A broken clock right twice a day. That's right. Yeah. Well, this guy has actually started to recognize the pension problem and has made a few suggestions. So Jerry is worth watching, really, I know. Don't drum me out of the tea party for saying it. But Jerry Brown is worth watching. The uh, uh, you know the left is worth watching. And let me tell you, when you've got the Los Angeles Times, Sacramento Bee, and other people in between talking about our fiscal crisis – uh, you know, you know things are bad. It reminds me of that joke. You know, it was a cold day. Somebody said, "How cold was it?" Well, it was so cold that lawyers were walking around with their hands in their own pockets. <laughs> uh, the uh, you know, so how bad is the pension crisis and the fiscal crisis in California? Is so bad that Jerry Brown and the Democrats are talking about it as well. So it, it means that California is poised, ladies, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, to do uh, uh, something about this. And uh, we here uh, on this broadcast and we in the California Tax and Limitation Committee and concerned mothers and fathers and citizens of all parties, all ethnicities, all neighborhoods are joined in our concern about this beautiful golden state of ours. Now, we have started at the California Tax and Limitation Committee a series of, of forums, and we have one coming up next week. And where do they go, Jonathan Wilson, uh, to get information about this? Well, uh, the, the event is at uh, Betty and Jim Byers' house in South Pasadena, and, if you, and it's at 9 a.m. next Saturday, February 24th. And you can go to our website at catlc.net and click on the Events tab, and there will be uh, more details about the Neighborhood Forum. Excellent. Uh, Jonathan has been doing yeoman's work in getting this. If you're getting our, our emails, and by the way, you can go to RadioFreeLosAngeles.net, repeat, RadioFreeLosAngeles.net, and you can sign up. Hey, you can give me some love. You can give us some money here. i got to come back for that update. You got an update for us yeah, on contributions? Yeah, we got an update while you're on it. Let's uh... – yeah. Our fundraising is going well. It's not going great. It's sort of stalled a little bit, but we got some great contributions this week. Uh, Cynthia in Pasadena stepped up and made another contribution. Oh, yeah. One of our greatest supporters. Thank a you, A long Cynthia. time. 
Uh, Patricia and Glendale mm-hmm. with five hundred dollars. Whoa, that's not bad. <laughs> All that's right, not bad. Yeah. All right. Uh, Tom I've... in Arcadia. Thank yeah. you, Tom. Uh, and of course, Ed in South Pasadena and Bill in Glendale and Jim in Altadena. They're our regular supporters. So yes. they're on. They're what we call what public radio calls sustaining members. Yeah, yeah <laughs> sustaining Your tote bags and DVDs right. of the Beach Boys That's 1983 right. Washington D.C. concert are on their way. <laughs> but no, that is it is a good title, a sustaining member because yes. those supporters help keep this thing going. That's you know, they're correct. They're always there. They're on a monthly contribution. So I would encourage, uh, if you're interested in supporting this program and the California Tax Limitation Committee, uh, the best way you can do that is is become a sustaining member. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, thank you, Jonathan, uh, uh, for that. Now, that leads us uh, 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 in into our events. You know, if you'd like to have a public forum uh, uh, here with the California Tax Limitation Committee, we encourage you to... To call the office, go to our website, catlc.net, net, dot net, and dot net. Uh, go there, send an email through the system, send an email uh, to uh, to our uh, plan, to our program, go on Facebook, we're all over. Go there and say, hey, look, you're interested in having a neighborhood forum, and somebody from my office will call you. And we'll help you to organize it. And, you know, uh, we we want people who are interested and concerned about their community. We don't care about party. It's not a Republican show. It's not a Democrat show. It's not even a Tea Party show. This is a citizen-sponsored radio program that's determined to get the word out about what it's going to take to save our state. And, and when you reach out to your neighbors and invite them to a neighborhood forum, yeah. most of the time they're going to thank you. You know, that's what I saw this afternoon at the Schraders. Yeah. Is a lot of their neighbors were like, we had no idea that this was going on. Right. And we can get involved and make a difference. Yeah, we often find uh, in one, one of these times uh, when when I uh, – well, we have a little bit more time on the show. I'll set aside a little time to talk to you about battered conservative syndrome. And one of the uh, symptoms of that is a sense of isolation, that you're the only one. You're the only one concerned about these issues. Uh, you're the only one who's interested in doing anything about these issues. And when you get into one of these forms, you you you, you breathe a sigh of relief because you're there. Uh, you're with people that you know. You're with other families, uh, other neighbors. It's powerful. There's still nothing more powerful in, in our society uh, than the neighborhood. It, it really does. It doesn't take that stupid village. It takes a neighborhood, and we Americans have always been really good at that sort of thing. And remember, the most important office, political office in the United States, is the Office of Citizen. Be back with you here in just a few moments. If you like what you're hearing and would like to support Radio Free Los Angeles and the California Tax Limitation Committee, please call area code 626-792-1772, 626-792-1772, or kindly visit our website, catlc.net, catlc.net. You can also watch Radio Free Los Angeles on Facebook Live at RadioFreeLA.us. If you'd like to talk with Radio Free Los Angeles, the phone lines are wide open. 866-870-KRLA. That's 866-870-5752. We're live, local, and here to talk with you. 866-870-KRLA. All right, back with you, Mike Alexander again. Hey, Carl. Yes, sir. People want to call in. What do they do? What number do they call? All you have to do is dial 866-870-5752. All right. Uh, now, this segment, I promised you that we would talk uh, uh, about we, we've done a lot of stuff uh, about debt and numbers, and nothing is harder to cover on radio than uh you know, then numbers. So I'm going to leave those numbers alone, and I'm going to talk to you now for a few minutes about uh, the most important resource that we have, and that is our children. I'm a man of a certain age. I now have grandchildren, but uh, 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 you know what? You know, everybody's uh, kids is everybody's business. We are confronted here in this state 
with a very large number of children, many of them here, either from other countries or the sons and daughters of people who are recently from another country or who have very limited language skills. We also have a lot of children who are uh, the sons and daughters of native English speakers but find themselves in the barrios and the ghettos and the uh, uh, poorer parts of a town with very poor educational resources. We have the same problem in many cities. Uh, bad schools are, are no stranger to anybody. Uh, they can happen in any city, in any town, and they regularly do. Now, uh, there's been a lot of criticism of public schools. My principal criticism of public schools is not necessarily that they don't teach and we could go into uh, and will in the future have people on that will talk to you about how the public schools by and large fail in their primary mission. That'll get them on the phone. 866-870-5752. Yeah, that, that'll get them going. At any rate, we'll, we'll talk about uh, the failure. But my principal criticism of the public schools, and I think the major criticism of public schools is first – that it is government education. It is government programming. It is the government telling you what to do, what to think, what to read, literally. And they do that for uh, for 12 years. And they do that very often in opposition to the parents. And the second bad thing about education is the other side of that coin. And that is the parents have nothing to say about the school, about the management of school, about the choice of school, the choice of curriculum, the moral formation, the political formation, nothing. All of this, which is the primary duty of the parent, is taken out of their hands and handed to the government, and they tell you what to do. Uh, And when they fail in their mission, what do they always do? When your kid doesn't learn or there's problems there, well, they say, really, the parents are the primary educators of the children. Well, nonsense. They take all of your money. They take the kid. They force you to go to their school, so-called. You're, you're forced in there. It's a it's an armed camp at best. Uh, your kids are scared. Uh, they, they, they learn nothing. The entire institution is completely impervious to criticism, to management. It's expensive. And then they tell you it's all... Uh, is su problema. No, they are the problema, and that is why there are so many people that have been pushing for school choice. Now, what, uh, Mike, what exactly is school choice? For those that, what, what is the proposal that is on the table? Thank you. You know, for, for those of us who have lived and breathed this issue for many years, uh, it, it's easy to start talking about it without recognizing that people often don't know what it is. Well, what you have right now, let's define it in the negative, what you have right now is no choice. All right, sometimes you were given a few alternatives called charter schools, but by and large the parent does not have the right, as of law, under the statute, under our California Constitution, to take the child and the tax money, and go get a school. Now, of course, you got the right to school. All you have to do is pay the, pay the check. My parents put me through school. I put my kids through a private school and so forth. They great personal sacrifice. Lots of people don't have that money. And if you don't have your own money, forgive the bad grammar, you don't have no choice. Okay, so we've defined it in the negative. Now let's uh, uh, define it in the affirmative. uh, The whole idea of school choice is is that parents should be able to receive the amount of money that the state would otherwise spend, the pro rata share, and in California that runs ten or $11,000 per child. The parents should have the right to take that scholarship that ten or eleven thousand dollars that the state would otherwise spend on the local public school, the parents should have the right to take that and spend that money and put their kid or kids in schools of their choice. And that school could be a private school, 
It could be the same public school. Remember what I said Un- under this proposal that I'll discuss with you. If you want to, if if you like your school, you can keep your school. If you like your teacher, you can keep keep your teacher. Right, Barack? I got to get Obama to do my commercials for me. <laughs> no, in fact, no. I'm not going to pay him. We'll just we'll, we'll just dub in a teacher yeah, in yeah. school. Can you dub it? Can you do that, Williams? All right. You know. And, we, and, and right. <laughs> Anybody that saw Obama's uh, portrait get unveiled this week? Um, yeah. I mean, that thing looked like a s- second-grade art project or something. You know, it was I like, know. Yeah, and we're supposed great. to think that he had good judgment for eight years? Oh, yeah, I, right. I, I, I know. It was ridiculous. Back to what we were so, yeah, so what ahead, you're saying. So what you're saying is that school choice is uh, government-subsidized private education? No. No, there you go. Now you're sounding like a socialist. <laughs> no. Uh, there's no such thing as government subsidized education. There is, always is, and never will be anything other than taxpayer oh, subsidized yeah. education. It's my money. It's your money. And I know some of you out there saying, hey, I'm not going to give those illegal parents money to put their ninos through a public school. Well, let's put it this way. That child is an American citizen. He's a child no matter what he's entitled in, uh, to in education. We are obligated uh, both legally and morally to make sure that any child that's here in in the United States, however he got here, that's that, that's not in my, uh, in my purview here on this show. However it is that he got here, now we've got to educate him so that he's going to be fully equipped to participate in our economy, fully equipped to participate in our culture, fully equipped to participate in our democracy. And right now, the schools are not getting that job done. They're places at best of propaganda. And what happens with most of these kids in the in the inner city uh, who don't speak uh, English and they don't speak Spanish, they just end up being stupid in two languages. And that is unacceptable. We have to make it uh, say to everybody that it is unacceptable for any child not to have the skills that he or she needs to succeed. That's what we're all about here. Now, school choice will do this for a very reason. Now, there is, let, let me describe the proposal uh, and uh, what, what we have uh, go, going to. Hey, Sullivan, how many, how many minutes uh, do I have? I got four. Okay, good. So, I'm, uh, what's that? Uh, are we going to do the government grifter this week? Oh yeah, we're going to do government okay. grifter. Are we run. We got a little some bit good late? ones, so I want to oh, make sure we get. To hey, them. well, we've got. Uh, yeah, it looks like we're running just a little bit late. I got four minutes. We want to do our favorite feature here, but I promise I will come back next week and talk to you in detail about the an emerging uh, school choice that's going to give uh, proposal that's going going to give you the parent up to $11,000 a year in educational savings account to put your child in a school of your choice, whether it's religious, private, charter school, or public school, and and, and save the difference in tuition and use it in college or for other approved expenses. Very exciting. Uh, now, in the time remaining, <laughs> do we do we have our... our, our uh, it's time for... It's time for this week's Government Grifter Award. Wow, so dramatic. The nominees this week, all from the city of Los Angeles. We had a lot of <laughs> nominations sent in, and thank you guys for sending those in. Yeah. But the first one is the fireboat mate. What? What? The fireboat mate. <laughs> fireboat I, mate. I didn't know that the city of Los Angeles had a fireboat. Yeah. But this is not the captain. And that somebody made This is just it. the mate. Mate. So... He is making a total salary, annual salary and benefits of two hundred and twenty-seven thousand dollars. Sign me up! <laughs> I'm applying for that one. Two twenty. Yeah, so if he's a mate, that means there's more than one of him on that boat. Yeah. Oh man. <laughs> man. And wow. the second nominee, also oh. from the city of Los Angeles, is a traffic officer. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Not the most popular people around. No. Is that no. a meter maid? What is a traffic? I think it's the person that stands in the middle with the yeah, little white maybe, gloves, like maybe. Michael Jackson, yeah. and yeah. like so dances around and. Direct- Doing pretty well. The, yeah. This traffic officer is making two hundred and nineteen thousand dollars a year. No, oh, yeah. get out with you. <laughs> no. Los that's, that's really that, sad. And this, this is one of my favorites. Um, this is a, an employee in the city of Los Angeles. His title is golf manager. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
at two hundred and six thousand dollars a year. The golf manager. Golf right? manager. I think Obama Mike, might apply I think for I that might one. Want that job. Oh my god. What do they god. just set up tea times for city employees? And I, have, I have no idea. Yeah, that's amazing. So it took a lot of uh, deliberation, but the envelope, please. All right. Okay. Oh, Manny, come on. You're the drummer. Let's go. And oh. this week's. Government Grifter Award goes to the golf manager at $206,000 a year. All right. This is golf manager's first nomination <laughs> and first Government Grifter Award. All Tell right. Tell won. Right. Congratulations, golf manager. Okay. All right. Now, if you're a golf manager, up. if you're a fireboat mate, if you're any of those, we want you to call in because... We want to know what you do for that kind of money. <laughs> that music's so inspiring. Oh, it is. It is. It is. Uh, yeah. We, hey, we got one minute to go. I, w- I want to thank uh, everybody uh, here. Sullivan, our uh, call screener, Sterling Contreras, uh, Carl Kozlowski, here, here. Manny Soprano, not the least of whom is... Uh, our indefatigable Jonathan Wilson. And Marcy Guzman. Big shout out to Marcy Guzman. Hey, Marcy, thanks for everything out there, dear. We appreciate it. We want you to join next week. Don't forget to go to catlc.net uh, for next week's program and go to radiofreelosangeles.net. That's all spelled out. Go on there, contribute, keep us on. We want to move to two hours on a Sunday night. We can't do it without you. Thanks again. Join us next week. For Radio Free Los Angeles. Hep hep. Huzzah. Huzzah. Hep hep. Huzzah. Hep hep. Huzzah. Huzzah.